This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, we'll be rigging up artwork for character animation. Although After Effects lacks built-in inverse kinematics, we can make do with parenting. So let's open up After Effects and animate some characters. So here in After Effects, I'd like to give you first a look at where we're going with all this. So. In this comp, you can see we have an adjustment layer and then a whole bunch of layers that were made in Adobe Illustrator. Each of these represents, you know, each segment of the arm. And instead of controlling each one individually, we have an adjustment layer and we have effects applied there like a right bicep angle. So what does that mean? Well, when I start adjusting this, it starts to adjust the angle of that part instead of having to animate each of these individually. So instead of what would have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rotations to think about, we only have three. And you could reduce that to two or one or however you want to set it up. But by the end of this, you will have a character that is controlled through these external controls, which are angle controls. And we also have uh, some things in here for uh, stretching the parts out so we can collapse and stretch those so i mean that applies to this robot but maybe not to you but we will go through some of the techniques that can help you rig up many character attributes to these things right here which if you're familiar with character rigging in something like 3ds max or maya you'll know that after you create an inverse kinematic skeleton for your uh, animation. You can then put in sliders for things. For example, you could go from pose to pose, you could blend poses, but those are things that After Effects does not have unless you download external plugins. So this is how to make do with what you've got. So our journey actually begins in Illustrator. So here in Illustrator, I have this two-dimensional character laid out. And I just want to show you this so you have an idea of what the layout of this looks like. So you can see I have one layer for this little base and we have one layer for the body here, you know, one layer for each of these arm segments and then all of the other arm segments and the hook at the end. So each of these is on its own layer, even though they do contain uh, many things in them. Uh, this is probably the, the most you need to divide up this thing. Uh, in newer editions of After Effects, you can separate these things into shape layers, but because I know I want each of them to be animated individually, I've kept them all on separate layers. So what I'm going to do is start from scratch in Adobe After Effects. So I'm going to go File, New Project, and uh, I'm not going to bother saving what I've done to that. We have a new project, and I would like to import uh, the character Riggin, uh, I don't know why I spell things incorrectly, but you know, this is the uh, .ai Adobe Illustrator file. I'm going to import that. It's going to ask me uh, how would I like to import it. I would like it to be a composition. I would like the footage dimensions to be the layer size, which means it's going to create a composition with all of those layers in it, and each of those layers will retain their layer size from Illustrator. The other option is document size, which means each layer, so each arm segment, will have properties relative to the frame size, and we don't want that. We want it on layer size. Hit OK. And you can see, when we open this up, that we have something that looked very much like what we had in Illustrator. So we've got this and we got that. The only difference is the transparent background, Ooh, which I turned on and off by clicking this. So don't worry about it if yours is black, it's actually transparent, it means there's no information there. So let's uh, move on and start setting this up. The first thing I wanna do is define the relationships between each of these things. So the first thing is I don't want them to be rotating on this center axis here. I want to move that. So I'm going to hit Y, which will bring up the pan behind tool, which will allow you to click and drag around this anchor point. So I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it is an anchor point. It's a circle with these little targeting lines on it. And I'm going to move it over here to this edge. And I want to move it then 
right here to be like at the midway point between, I guess, uh, its attachment to the body and, uh, and the object itself. So I'm going to do that to all of them, moving this out to like the midway point, like so. Now why I'm doing that is because I would like their axis of rotation to be there. So uh, I understand that your characters may not be uh, robots with multi-segmented arms. Just remember that since we're dealing with the rotation of these little parts, then we need to define where we want them to be rotating around. So if you don't set this up beforehand, you're going to have headaches. That's why this is, uh, I guess, step two in this process. So likewise, I'm going to repeat the process over here, making sure each of the parts is going to rotate around where I expect it to. Uh, a lot of the confusion that comes from this process happens when, you know, people see, oh, why isn't it, you know, why isn't it rotating the way I think it should rotate? Well, it's likely because you have not defined it in the way you intended. So just to make sure that you go ahead and exercise control over all these parts. Similarly, I want the body to rotate around this point, and I want the base to rotate around this point. So we've redefined all of the anchor points. Now we want to set up the relationship between each of these. So that goes starting from the outside in. We have uh, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm going to parent 7 to 6, 6 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1, and then 1 to the body, the body to the base. And then similarly on the right arm, I'm going to start with the hook out at the end, parent that to 6, and then 6 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 1 to the body. Now, why we're doing this is because now if something rotates this shoulder, the rest of the things will rotate as well. Which means if I start rotating, hitting R to call up the rotation of all these, if I start rotating all of them, they all start to curve and bend in this way. Okay, so we don't have too much time. I don't want to bog you down with uh, a lot of things in this tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to use some expression controllers to make this arm bend. So the thing we want to do is look into expression controls. I like to use the angle control, but you could use the slider control if you really want. We're going to go layer, new, and create a new adjustment layer. We're going to rename this to be the control layer because it is being used for control. I'm going to change its color uh, just because you want to keep everything organized. And then I'm going to apply this angle control to that layer. I'm going to lock it up here so that that angle layer is not going anywhere. And I think I'll rename angle control to be right arm bend. So in the example, I had uh, one control for the shoulder, one control for bending this section, one control for bending this section. So in this version, I'm just going to apply one for all of it. So let's go and do the right arm. So we're going to call up all the right arm properties here. I'm going to hit R. All right, and I'm just going to pull this window up so that we can see everything we're working with. I'm going to hold down Alt and click on the rotation here. I'm going to pick whip to that angle block right there. All right, so now this, you can see the number has turned red, means that it is linked to something else, and that something else is adjusting this. So this is at minus 14. Now this one's at minus 14. So you can, you know, copy the rotation property and then just select those layers and then paste it. And then they all take on the exact same rotation property. And you can see it's right in there. So as I adjust this, then that uh, this whole thing kind of bends around. So you can have all sorts of bending going on, which is which is pretty great. So in the example, we had uh, two of these. So one controlled the first part of the arm and the second controlled like the second part of the arm. If you want to do that, then you would just select all of the parts uh, that you would want linked to it and instead uh, drag to it. So see now that one's different and we can then take that rotation 
you know, copy it and stick it on whichever ones we want to bend in the opposite direction. So it's that easy. And now you can keyframe and control, you know, two parts of it if you want it to like snake around. So that's totally up to you. Similarly, I linked the shoulder action to uh, something else so that I could control the shoulder independently and maybe make it do the wave. But, uh, you know, just didn't go that way. So that is setting up these angle things to control these. Now all I have to do is call up these uh, these properties here. I did that by hitting UU, but you can just uh, open up the effects. And, uh, you know, you can do things like, let's set those to zero for now. You can put uh, keyframes on them. You can move ahead and start giving them values like this. So they go, Weir. if he wants to pick something up off the ground maybe, and then, uh, you know, hold it over his head, give that a try, like so, maybe he wants to eat it or zap it with his eye laser, I don't know, but, uh, you know, you can do whatever, and then, you know, you adjust these keyframes as you like, maybe you need to easy ease them, maybe you need to go in the graph editor and, you know, mess around with them a little bit and apply weird types of uh, curves to their to their particular uh, animating so that they look kind of funny. So we're kind of like that. Anyway, you, you do whatever you feel is best uh, for that. Uh, you can also have this guy tip back and forth uh, like I did and just play around with it like that. And this character will all be bound to this control layer. However, the fun uh, doesn't stop there. What if instead of controlling in this comp, we want to control it from another comp, let's say. So let's say we, uh, we take this and we put it into a new composition. So that way we can, you know, change its, its position, its rotation, its scale, whatever in here. But we still want to bend and play around with its arms. So we would put, say, angle control layers out here. And then all we have to do is point these things in here to not this comp, but we would have to say comp and then, uh, you know, in brackets or parentheses, as some people call them, uh, because they are the rounded type of brackets. And then just name off uh, where we're looking like this. And uh, I don't remember the name. It's going to give me an error because it can't find what I'm looking at. But uh, it's just called angle control. I don't know why I called it that. But uh, I'm just going to assign this a value. And then I'm looking for the effect. Da, da, da. You have to make sure that you name the layer correctly and then the effect correctly. So we know the effect we're looking for is angle control. All right, but now we have to name the correct layer, and that layer is called Character Riggin. So let's see how this goes. Cross your fingers, and it's all good. So now I'm just going to copy this rotation and apply it to all those arms like this. Now I go into this comp, and I start messing around with this. And as you can see, everything is operating nicely. I can move it around. I can scale it. Uh, yeah, I think that should be enough to get you started on rigging up this character to uh, move around using angle controls instead of manually keyframing all of its moving parts. Uh, you can use the slider to affect the position and anchor point if you want to spread things out. Uh, you could use uh, things like checkboxes to control blinking, just all sorts of things. But I mean, today we're just talking about this rotation as an example. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, your source for excellent music and sound effects. You should check that out. If you want to learn more about After Effects and other applications, then stop by the blog. There are plenty of other tutorials from myself and other experts on there. There's always new stuff going on, so you should subscribe to Premium Beat in all of its channels on Vimeo, on YouTube, and to RSS feeds? That's a, that's a thing, maybe. Anyway, if you want to see more of my stuff, that's uh, stuff by Evan Abrams. If you want to hear this voice more, check out uh, my YouTube channel, EC Abrams. Hit me up on Twitter, at EC Abrams, uh, or go to EvanAbrams.com. Or check out my space here in the author's page on Premium Beat to see all the stuff I've got on Premium Beat. There's a lot of good things about uh, animation and about motion graphics. So check that out if you're into it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to these channels, and I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again, and have a nice day.